In this video, I'm going to show you reading in files using uh, input streams and file readers. And uh, what we're going to use is a data set that I got from data.gov. And I'm going to also post it into the video and uh, along with the other class materials. But it's just a traffic count CSV file. Um, I'm actually not even sure what state it's for. I can't remember, but I think it might be for um, Pennsylvania, I'm, just, I'm not sure. Anyway, it's just a CSV file, and if you're not uh, familiar with CSV, it's comma separated values. This is um, uh, an older spreadsheet format. Um, it's it's kind of like uh, a very simple Excel style format, and what it is is just a, a list of values. Each new line is a new record, and the commas separate the columns. So you can see in this. I have um, the list of the headers. I have ID, traffic, volume, location, uh, traffic, volume, count, location, address, street, date of count, total. And these will correspond to the lines below them separated by the comma. So that's why it's called a CSV, comma separated values. So I have a program that I've written here called read in traffic counts with no buffer. and the reason it's called that is because I'm actually going to read this in without using a buffer straight into a string builder and I'm going to read it in character by character. This is a pretty huge file, it's over a thousand lines long and it's um, I'm going to read it all into a string in memory. So first what I'm going to do is call uh, file paths and I'm going to resolve this path. and where this actually is, it's in the working directory I'm in inside of a folder called datasets. So I'm going to say system.getProperty userdir, and user.dir will resolve to the current uh, directory that I'm running this program from. If I resolve datasets, it's going to go find a folder inside of that called datasets. And then if I resolve this file name, it'll go find the file inside of that folder called average daily traffic counts. So Let's throw a breakpoint in here and just start running this program. Whoops, forgot to do debug as. Okay, I'm going to switch back to the other view and just hit F6 to keep going down through the program. So F6, whoops, F6, and we'll see we got the file, and it does exist. I can see it right. Uh, where are we? We're in week nine right now, so you can see it right there. And I'm going to print out what file we're reading. So you can see that got printed out. Um, and what we're going to do is use a string builder. A string builder lets you concatenate strings together in a more efficient way. And we're actually going to concatenate a string together one character at a time because I'm going to open up a file reader. And this file reader it's going to actually convert our file into an input stream and then read from it. Um, and the way it does that is it takes a file. So I have a path up here and I'm going to convert it into a file with this to file command. That's what a file reader takes. It just takes a file as an input. Uh, let's see right here, file. Um, and once we have our file reader set up, we can read from it. So the way this works is reader, as long as you don't have a negative one, there's still data in the stream. So to go into this while loop, what I'm going to do is read from it until I get a negative one. That means I'll be out of data and the stream will be complete. So I'm going to say, as long as data does not equal negative one, keep reading. So I'm going to kind of prime the data stream here to make sure I get into this while loop. and what's going to happen is I'm going to convert data to a character because data was an integer, it just read a byte in, and I'm going to take that converted character and append it into my string builder. And again, I'm going to read. So reading one character at a time is slow, and I know in another video we talked about using buffers, which are arrays where you read in chunks of data, but we're going to read in one character at a time just to demonstrate how this is possible. So let's read, and we're going to go down into this while loop, and you'll see I'm reading in an I. Now, what is that I? That would be this ID, right? 
because we're going to read in one line, then we're going to read in the next line, the next line, the next line. And we're going to read in this entire file a single character at a time. Now, computers are extremely fast, so this will still happen almost instantaneously, but um, if you're not chunking it into pieces, you're still going, you're going to have to iterate over these one at a time, so it will be slower than doing it in chunks. But let's just see what happens. I'm going to add it to my builder. So my builder now has an I in it, and I'm going to read the next chunk. So I'm converting that into a D. So now I'm on the next piece. I'm on this D right here. And I've continued to read that in and keep going to the next one. It should be a space character so it doesn't show up. And what is the next one? It should be a comma. So now I'm on uh, the fourth character in here. One, two, three, four. Um, and the builder is appending these. So I'm going to jump through a couple times and read a few more in. Let's see where we're at now. Got a C. My builder says I'm reading in the C for traffic. So I'm going to throw another breakpoint in here and just hit um, toggle breakpoint. And I'm going to continue on. So I'm going to hit play here and just resume until we hit the next breakpoint. That just makes me skip over all of that reading in the while loop. And now I'm going to go to the next line and see um, builder dot two string. It'll put all of that data into a string. So we read all of this data off of the file system and into one gigantic string. Now this isn't very helpful to us because each line is a separate record. But what we, can we do? Um, we can split this into different records by doing uh, string dot split and pass in the new line so that we get a array of strings one for each line so if we happen to look at the first line it's got the headers the second line has the that ID third line has the next one um, so you can see we got all the records into separate pieces in the array and this is exactly how you can read in a um, a uh, file a CSV file and then split it into data so um, I'm going to let this program complete. I'm just printing out how many lines it was. It was 1,280 lines. So that makes sense because we split it into that many lines. And um, the first line had the header. The second line had the data. Um, and so on and so forth. So in the next video, I'll show uh, reading in with a buffer and probably doing some kind of uh, manipulation with the um, input stream.